Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and it's Wednesday, March 8th. Tesla has started to push the new full self-driving beta version 11 software, but the rollout is a bit slow in terms of reaching users. Beta version 11 is both exciting and scary, as it's supposed to merge Tesla's full self-driving and autopilot highway stacks. The update was delayed several times, but it finally went to the closed beta release last month. Tesla is slowly releasing it to more testers, but it has yet to go to the broad release. Today, the automaker started to push the update to a slightly larger group. The update features several improvements to the new single stack, as well as new visualizations that give the driver more insights as to what the full self-driving beta software is actually doing. We have the release notes and highlights on our site if you'd care to peruse. Electrek.co. The NHTSA has announced that it is investigating a Tesla Model Y over a potential issue after two vehicles had their steering wheels fall off. In a new report, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration wrote that it is aware of two reports of 2023 vehicles where this happened. The agency is still working with Tesla to determine the scope of the manufacturing issue to see if it affects more vehicles and then hence would necessitate a recall. Since this is actually a case where a software fix cannot be employed, perhaps this recall would be actually a recall. Elon Musk commented on Tesla's next car, saying it will operate almost entirely in autonomous mode. Now that sounds quite optimistic considering the Tesla hasn't made the capability available on existing vehicles. So either that car is really far away or full self-driving is actually coming soon. <laughs> uh, during a brief appearance at the Morgan Stanley conference today, Elon Musk briefly commented on the next generation platform. His comments align with previous ones about the purpose-built Tesla RoboTaxi. And it certainly isn't an isolated notion. Musk has been promising that Tesla is going to make its vehicles built since 2016 full self-driving through software updates, but of course there were a few caveats to that one. Four years ago, Musk made some very confident claims on stage, saying that Tesla's autonomous cars were one, maybe three years away. The CEO went so far as specifying level 5 SEA self-driving at one point. Now, some Tesla buyers pay between five and $15,000 confident that the automaker would eventually deliver on that promise. And well, eventually still has plenty of time left. After releasing its next generation Kona electric model on Tuesday, Hyundai has high expectations for the updated urban SUV, as they call it. Hyundai believes that the new Kona EV will sell more than its gas-powered counterpart. They certainly have reason to believe it as well. The electric versions accounted for about 40% of the lineup sales last year, and this year they are anticipating 60%. The Kona Electric is a pretty good value, scoring 260 miles of range and a starting price of around $36,000. While it could be seen as a smaller Ionic 5, it also charges slower due to a lower voltage architecture. Mercedes-Benz has finally shared the U.S. pricing of its upcoming EQE SUV, before it hits dealerships this spring. I would say that spring is around the corner, but it's been snowing this week and more is in the forecast, so I'm starting to have my doubts. But at any rate, per the press release from Mercedes-Benz USA, the EQE SUV will arrive in the US starting at an MSRP of $77,900 for the 350 plus slash 350 formatic trim. At that pricing, the lowest tier of the EQE SUV falls below the $80,000 threshold for an electric SUV built in North America and could very well qualify for the federal tax credits up to $7,500. The battery sourcing requirement still needs to be ironed out. Well, wouldn't you know it? Tesla is not alone today. Nissan is recalling over 1,000 Aria electric SUVs, citing that the steering wheel can detach from the steering column. It seems to be affecting more vehicles than it did for Tesla, or at least the recall has already begun and it seems a little wide. Nissan has received two reports of loose steering wheels between January 30th and February 8th, prompting them to launch a dealer quality action to inspect the steering wheels on 418 vehicles. Now, according to the letter from the NHTSA sent to Nissan this week, in abundance of caution, 1,063 Aria electric vehicles are being recalled. 
This week's episode is sponsored by SAE International, hosts of the WCX World Congress Experience event. For 2023, WCX is set to return to Detroit from April 18th to 20th at Huntington Place. As the largest technical mobility event in North America, WCX brings together thousands of engineers, suppliers, and mobility professionals to exchange ideas, discuss today's challenges, and build powerful relationships to move your career and the industry forward. Join the global mobility community in the Motor City this April to stay up to date on the latest technological advances, participate in roundtable discussions, and network with the brightest minds in the industry. Gain a competitive advantage and meet the people shaping the future of mobility. Visit wcx.sae.org to register now. The EV price war continues to heat up in China. Ford said on Wednesday that the Mustang Mach-E buyers in the Middle Kingdom would be eligible for a new promotion, with discounted prices starting around $30,000. This amounts to a discount of around $5,700 until the end of April. After Tesla spurred discounts from Xpeng and Toyota, there are more forces in the Chinese market. With several brands such as BYD releasing cost-effective electric vehicle solutions and startups like NIO rapidly expanding, legacy automakers are struggling to keep up. Volkswagen Group is reportedly pausing previously laid out plans for a battery plant in Europe. It appears that Volkswagen is awaiting the European Union's response to the Inflation Reduction Act in the U.S., which could offer the group up to $10.5 billion in incentives. Although European automakers, like Volkswagen, were initially against the Biden administration's massive $369 billion subsidy package to bolster EV and battery production, many have been placated by tax incentives for EV projects built stateside. The EU's commission has been toiling away with its own local subsidies for EV and battery production, but industry executives have said that it isn't able to compete with the benefits offered in the USA. In fact, a senior executive president at the commission meeting said, quote, It looks pretty bad. There was an absence of concrete measures. Now, we should know more next week when the EU commission publishes the Net Zero Industry Act. After three years of development, Lightship has officially shared its flagship L1 electric RV. The L1 is a clean sheet approach to the traditional RV, focusing on hyper-efficiency while being towed, and transforming into a spacious camping space with complete ecosystem of battery-powered amenities. The 27-foot trailer measures 8.5 feet wide and can power its height up and down from 6 feet 9 inches in road mode to 10 feet tall when parked in encamp mode. This offers a capability to sleep 4 to 6 people. The L1 itself is equipped with its own electric powertrain and 80 kilowatt-hour battery pack, propelling itself behind the towing vehicle which offers a near-zero range loss. In fact, Lightship's co-founders told us that the combustion trucks that were towing the L1 actually gained fuel efficiency in certain cases. The camper does not qualify for electric vehicle tax credits, but instead qualifies as a solar-powered dwelling tax credit. Under this credit, the camper can be had for $118,400. Reservations are open on their website for $500 down, and production is scheduled for 2024. In today's community comment found on YouTube, Dean McManus says, GM's Ultra Cruise ADAS will be interesting to watch over the next five years. I am glad to hear that they will be offering a wide variety of sensors to improve spatial accuracy. They have a ways to go to approach the breadth and flexibility of Tesla's autopilot and full self-driving ADAS projects, but they are bravely wading into the deep end of the ADAS pool, and hopefully GM's careful approach of promising very little will be better received than Tesla's promising too much too soon, which has brought scrutiny and fervent negative press despite steady advancements and improvements. Largely, I agree with your assertions, Dean. Tesla has a great system on their hands and a wild amount of data to utilize as well, but they also have a reputation of jumping the gun in terms of what capabilities to expect. Now, with that kind of a backdrop, pretty much anything that General Motors says will be considered tame. I haven't spent too much time myself with any of the driver's assist systems, so I'm left to rely on the experiences of the Electrek team and users at large. Really, there's only a few that stand out, as far as I know. Tesla is the one to beat, and where it's available, I hear that General Motors Super Cruise can do exactly that, 
but again with a limited number of roads that they can operate on. When full self-driving first became available, I heard that it was like driving with a teenager on PCP. I don't know if it's changed too much since then. The other ADAS systems are mostly ho-hum or not all that newsworthy. And this includes Ford, which somehow won awards based on how great their Blue Cruise was being accused of being. <laughs> I have spent some time personally in the Ionic 5 using that system, but it's really mostly useful on a highway, not even the freeway. And there's really only one that I travel on a somewhat regular basis. So I wind up not using it too much. I think that the change from level two autonomy into level five autonomy I think it's gonna take a long time and I think that's what it's gonna have to be. Just a huge leap into the total next stage. I think that level three and four, uh, I don't know. Sometimes I don't trust it in consumer hands. Uh, I kind of have a hard time trusting myself with level two. Thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G and I hope you have a great day.